starting off with the disconnectable externals. As you can see, removing the ramp disconnects the TC from the wide gaps. To reconnect it, just replace the ramp. Walking into the compound, there are two turrets on the lower sides of the gatehouses, protecting your furnaces from any angle, not allowing players to take cover behind the furnaces. Walking to the base, you will see a jump up that brings you onto the second floor of the base, where you will find plenty of box room and overall mobility. Going down the ladder hatch, you will see spots for furnaces and more boxes. The TC is placed strategically behind the workbench, slowing down raiders during an online raid. Sealing the bunker is as easy as placing a triangle roof on top of the floor frame and upgrading it to sheet metal. To open it, break the floor frame and climb back up the ladder. The third floor contains more boxes and batteries. This is where you're going to keep most of your loot with the valuables and core protected by the bunker. Entering the bedroom floor, you will notice peek ins to the third floor, allowing you to quickly respawn and kill any raiders in your loot rooms. This room is protected by turrets and honeycombing, making it very hard for raiders to fully take control over the base. Through the doors, entering the wide gap shooting floor. Through the gaps, you'll have full visibility over the compound, while the windows allow you to shoot outside the compound. The drop down gives you another angle on players, being very effective with a bolt action sniper rifle. Climbing up to the roof, you will be greeted by a vending machine, allowing you to set up a player shot. Ramps over windows, giving you more angles on any unexpected players outside of your base. find the Builder Sanctuary code for this exact base in the description. First, secure your build location by setting down this easy starter. Everything in this video beyond the starter will be built in its final grade, so just upgrade as you can. Everything in the core will once be upgraded to HQM to further extend the rate cost of the core. After this, you're going to want to build your shelves for your boxes and place your frames for your doors. Once you're able to, place your workbench in front of your tool cupboard to force any raider to destroy the workbench to gain access to the TC. Then you're going to extend out the starter as shown here. You're then going to place a half wall here and upgrade it to stone to allow you to permanently be able to replace the floor frame for the bunker. Upgrade everything around the bunker to HQM, but only upgrade the bunker itself to sheet metal. If upgraded to HQM, rocketing out the bunker would result into opening up everything around the bunker, further exposing everything and skipping many doors. Make sure most roofs over the core are all upgraded to the HQM to give full effectiveness to the bunker. 
forcing raiders to go through the bunker instead of just blowing right through the roof. Once the bunker is completed, you're going to immediately add jump ups on the side of the base to give you access to the second floor. The jump ups will remain twig until you can build the full jump ups and upgrade it to stone later on. Just as a reminder, here's how to use the bunker. Place a triangle roof on top of the twig floor frame and upgrade the roof to sheet metal. Keep the floor frame as twig, as to open the bunker you're going to need to break the twig, destroying the triangle roof. You can always replace the twig back anytime without having to place anything due to the stone half wall we placed earlier. Next, we're going to finish the honeycombing around the base. Now we're going to complete the jump ups on either side of the base, placing a window and a door frame and completing the jump up upgrading all the stone. The window provides visibility outside of the base. Do this on either side of the base. Place a double door for the front door, followed by a garage door behind. Once you have the blueprints permitting, place a window alongside with a vertical or horizontal embrasure inside the window frame. Now you're going to want to add additional honeycomb to the unprotected parts of the base, building out two triangles like so. Now we're going to complete the walls and honeycomb for the second floor, giving us more space for boxes and overall storage. Place ramps on the jump ups to block enemy raiders from going through the back walls, forcing them to break the ramps to proceed inside the base. You can also do this in the core, I just didn't do that for the sake of the video. is going to act as a jump up onto the third floor, so do not place a roof over this floor. Build another four box loot room in the one by one area to the left of the locker. Now we're going to cap off the second floor with floors in every spot except over the jump up. Upgrade all floors to sheet metal to extend the raid cost even more and for top down protection. On top of the jump up, you're going to add a door to a lead onto the third floor. Now we're going to bring up the honeycomb from the first floor to the second to protect our loot rooms.
be adding walls and honeycomb. Now we're going to cut up a spot for the battery to the left of the door. Place all electrical branches and switches inside the one by one and cap off with a window and an embrasure to further protect your battery and all electricity. Now we're going to complete the third floor walls and honeycomb around the entire base. Do as I do. Now we're going to place our second battery to the left of where the jump up will further be placed in the future. Now place one forward facing ramp on all of the one by ones. Now place a floor frame above one of the one by ones and another one diagonally across from the other side of the base. This will turn into the peak ins to the loot rooms, and the floor frame acts as a way to give stability to the fourth floor. You can place another forward facing ramp on the other one by one, acting as additional storage for a four box loot room. Make sure to upgrade the ramps to sheet metal to give the most visibility into the loot rooms. Once completed, fully cap off the third floor with roofs, except over the jump ups. Place door frames for double doors and garage doors protecting your loot. On top of the jump up, place another two walls and a door frame acting as a door over the jump up. But do not put a roof over the jump up because this is going to turn into a jump up onto the roof. Upgrade all roofs on top of the batteries to HQM. Starting on to the fourth floor, we're going to place our second jump up. Once again, do not place a roof on top of the one by one because this will block off your jump up to the roof. Now section out a walkway onto the wide gap shooting floor with the door frame and the wall blocking from the left side. Now place wall around the ramp peak ins and section out areas for the bedrooms. Upgrade all surrounding walls to sheet metal to protect this room from being rocketed into if your base is being pounded. Place two beds in either bedrooms, and then place one locker on top of the ramp. The placement may be tricky, but just do as I do. Place a turret under the jump up, and then cap off every room with garage doors. Add double doors leading out to the wide gaps to improve mobility. Now cap off the fourth floor. On top of the jump ups, place another one by one door with a single door frame onto the left side acting as a place where you'll put your vending machine.
Place windows and door frames to further extend out the walkway and door raid costs into the fourth floor. Place a half wall and a low wall to act as a heli peak from inside the doorway. Now repeat everything I do on the other side and make sure that you did not put a floor on top of the one by one like I did. Now we're going to start construction on the wide gaps and gates and externals. To save me from having to explain everything when I have to place, please watch the video and pay close attention. If you have to, slow down the playback speed. Place low walls on either sides to offset the left door frames, allowing you to place windows that line up straight to the floors, giving you the crouch beats. Repeat what you just did on the opposite side of the base, as it is the exact same on the other side. Now we are going to start construction on the second set of wide gaps. As I said before, please pay close attention and slow down the video if you need to. The foundations leading from the wide gaps to the gatehouses is not required. I'm just showing how much you can place for allowing you to place planters, boxes, etc.
Once again, repeat on the opposite side. Now we are going to build up the wide gaps. For the sake of the video, I will be doing this in no clip, but you can just use twig build ups, ladders, etc. Now bring all the frames up to the fourth floor, while the ones that are offset will be leave one half gap short. Place floors alongside the entire wide gap and bring up the door frames on the single one in the middle, acting as support, giving extra stability. Now place horizontal and vertical embrasures as shown. Now repeat everything that you just did on the other side once again. Bring up the floor frames on either side of the second wide gap to the fourth floor while leaving the first one empty. On top of the stone foundation, place stone frames on either side all the way up by two. Now place two more sets of windows on top of each other. Place windows as I do. Then place embrasures on all of the windows as shown. Once again, you're going to repeat everything that you just did on the opposite side of the base. Place frames in the places where I place them to add additional stability for the roof. Now cap off the roof with stone floors. Place low walls on top of the windows. You can use this strategy to help you place the low walls. Place ramps behind the windows to elevate you in front of them to fit in with the new meta, forcing you to crouch. Then place ramps and low walls in the area shown. Now place triangle roofs on top of all the windows. This acts as a reflector to heli insin, which will roll off of the roofs.
to then build up three layers of door frames with a floor on top, acting as a place for your windmills. I build four here, but only two is required. Once you've completed all of these steps, you've officially finished constructing your base. Thank you for watching.